Here we're going to talk about the ideal gas equation. It's a really important equation in chemistry, especially when you want to talk about gases. And the equation is PV equals NRT. And we should really put a box around this one because this one is important in so many ways. So P is the pressure of the gas. V is the volume of the gas. N stands for the number of moles of the gas. R is a constant of proportionality, which had to be figured out uh, through experimentation that was done a long time ago. We now know that it's 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin and T stands for the temperature. Now, why did we throw in that word ideal gas? What's so special about an ideal gas from a normal gas? Well, it turns out in an ideal gas, which there is no such thing in the world, but if you were to assume that all gases could be considered ideal under most circumstances, which is usually the case, it's a, it's a gas where there's no intermolecular forces. So when two molecules come close together, they do not interact at all electrically. They just simply bounce off each other like they're little super balls and nothing really happens. There's no intermolecular forces, which of course in the real world generally is not true. With inert gases, it's nearly true, but with most other gases, it's not. There's some electrical interaction when they collide and so some changes of velocity caused by that. Well, in an ideal gas, we completely ignore that. Secondly, in ideal gas, we say that the molecules themselves take up no room whatsoever. The volume of the molecules compared to the volume of the container that the gas is in is so minute that we can just ignore it. And again, in most circumstances, that's nearly the case. The volume is very small, we can just ignore it. But when the pressures go up very high, to very high levels, 100 atmospheres, 1,000 atmospheres, 10,000 atmospheres, then you push the molecules so close together that their volume does really begin to matter and the equation PV equals NRT no longer will work. Also, when you put uh, gases or gas molecules really close together where there's electrical interaction between them, then again, you cannot ignore that as well. They will, they will cause changes in the behavior of those molecules in the gas container. And so there's there another equation, we call it Van der Waals equation, which takes those two things into account. So ideal gas equation, we don't, we ignore that. And for most instances, that's not a problem at all. Next, we're going to talk about pressure, volume, and temperature. Those, as I mentioned in another video, those are called state variables. What we mean with that is that they indicate the state of the gas. This is the way we describe it. If we know the pressure, the volume, and the temperature, we know everything we need to know about the gas besides how much of it we have. So those are the physical states uh, that we need to know about a gas in order to deal with it. So if we have some amount of gas in a container, if we know the initial pressure, volume, and temperature, sometimes we denote it by P1, T1, uh, V1, and T1, and then we do something to it. We increase the pressure, we heat it up, we cool it down, we change the volume, the container gets bigger, the container gets smaller, whatever may happen, at the end we'll end up in a different state and we'll have potentially a different pressure, a different volume, and a different temperature. Well, how we can go from this state to this state, we can actually calculate that by using this equation PV equals NRT. And in a later video, we'll show exactly how to do that. A second thing you can do with the PV equals NRT equation, the ideal gas equation, is that if you know most of the portions of that equation, you can always come up with the last one. For example, let's say that we want to know the volume for one mole of a gas at STP conditions. Now, before we calculate that, let's first figure out what we mean by STP conditions. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. And in chemistry, standard temperature and pressure is set to be zero degrees centigrade, which is the freezing point of water, which is 273 Kelvin, and one atmosphere. So under those standard conditions, what is the volume that one mole of gas occupies? Well, now that we have this equation, we can figure it out because we're going to take PV equals NRT, solve that for V by dividing both sides of the equation by P. So we have V is going to be equal to NRT divided by the P, which now goes to the other side and into the denominator. So now let's plug in what we know. N, of course, is going to be one mole because that was by definition. R, we know what that is. That is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. We multiply that times the temperature, and of course that's standard uh, at STP conditions, temperature is zero or 273 Kelvin. 
Of course, some of you may say, well, wait a minute, it's not 273, it's actually 273.15, and you're absolutely correct, but we'll just run it off to 273, and then we divide that by the pressure, and of course, one atmosphere in standard units is 101,325 pascals, which is newtons per square meter. When you cancel out all the units, you're going to end up with cubic meters, so let's find out what that is equal to. So we have 8.315 times 273 divided by 101,325 equals, and I get 0 0.0224 cubic meters. And of course, if we convert that to liters, because let's see, let me put the conversion factor in there. So we have liters and cubic meters. One cubic meter is, oh, yes is a thousand liters, that is right, so that cubic meters cancel out, and so this ends up becoming 22.4 liters. And that's where that comes from. You may have seen in your chemistry book or heard in your chemistry class that one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 liters at STP conditions, and now you know why, because the relationship we have between the three state variables, the gas constant number of moles is exactly that, and it makes it really easy for you to find either the volume or the temperature or the pressure of a gas when you know everything else about the gas. And there's your introduction to the very famous ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT.